Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 159, Brett Wants to Be a Canvas Artisan, recorded on Wednesday, August 11th, 2021, from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Vinny Rajendran. (laughs) From... Nimbus? From Nimbus Designs. Yeah, this is the there first time I can see this part of it, right? I lot. know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, man. Manu, thank you so much, buddy. It's so good to have you back. Um, Tyler is at 30,000 feet, winging his way from Cincinnati into Orange County, California for some team meetings we're going to be having here. Um, and so you're filling in, man, and I really appreciate it. It's great to have you. Yeah, big shoes this time, but we'll do our best. <laughs> All right. Well, as always, we're going to start with our announcements and events. Uh, We actually are going to be doing a webinar, Zoho CRM Plus product overview. That's going to be on Tuesday, August 17th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, It's a little self-serving, this webinar. I'll be quite honest with you. It's going to be a great webinar, but... um, you know, if you, uh, you go to our events page, if you like go to our YouTube channel and, and you look at, um, all the stuff we have on YouTube, this like Zoho one product overview, you know, 12,000 views six months ago. Um, and people it's, it appears, you know, and then we did the CRM and if you look at these, they, they kind of catch up. So we've never done a CRM plus one and we have all these people asking and I'm kind of like, well, you could just watch Zoho one and pull out the eight apps, <laughs> but we're going to, we're going to go in a little more in depth and everything like that, but it, it gets good. And, uh, you know, honestly, I don't think we've talked about this in the past, but um, all, everybody comes to us from the YouTube channel pretty much. Right. And the SEO and those kind of things. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a pretty interesting one. And, and a lot's actually changed. Um, with what's going on there. And a lot more is changing with CRM plus, you know? Yeah. CRM plus is, is definitely, there's definitely significant differences. And I, I guess you don't necessarily see them as much unless you're working in each of the different ones, but the, you know, the menus on the side, like some of how the real estate is definitely the admin panel. I think the admin panel is like a little bit extra confusing, but Zoho has definitely been putting in some really solid work to improve those. And we've seen some pretty solid improvement in, in the last. And they've added added a couple apps in, you know, it's funny you talk about that whole, the whole UI with the jewels, you know, that's coming to Zoho one. I mean, we have it actually. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm it's a little different. nervous about it, to be honest. I I have it as well. And I've been trying it out, but with CRM plus and kind of some of the, you know, generally it works really, really well, but it's just another couple extra clicks to like get to that add and panel and navigate around that Zoho one. Um, but there are some really really, really cool features. And I know that the long-term benefits are going to get there. It's just going to be a little bit of work to get there. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And then uh, Zoho is doing one on Zoho One, go from apps to operating systems. It's going to be more of a workshop uh, where you can sit down. It happens to be, uh, you know, you, it's also on August 17th and it's in the evening. So you can get us in the morning and then uh, you can watch, you can, you know, wake up with us and go to bed with, with them. Uh, and then uh, Zoho's also got some cool stuff. They're doing this fun box thing. Um, this is really interesting. They've, they've partnered with these guys basically for loans. Um, not quite sure how that's going to work, but a lot of good events. Anyway, if you want to know what's going on in the world of Zoho, just head over to zanata.com slash events and there you will find everything. And with that, let's dive in. It's official, brother. <laughs> so Canvas uh, for Zoho CRM is officially live. And um, what Surprise. do you think? <laughs> I know. It, it's taken a long time. I mean, honestly, I this kind of caught me by surprise because I thought it was live already, right? I mean... It, Zoho tends to like release the early release and then just pretty much immediately just put the next version out publicly. But this is, I think, one of the first times where they really have taken their time to, you know, I think stabilize the product, make sure some, you know, take a lot of the partner feedback to develop the product, Um, which just I think it it adds a lot of confidence that like now that this is publicly released, like there is a hot, much higher bar for stability than with other deployments, which is extremely exciting. Yeah. And if you're not familiar, Canvas View for Zoho CRM allows you to go in and customize all of your module look and feel and views. So you basically can now go in and 
you know, completely lay them out any way you want. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, um, you'll see there's just so much you can do here. To me, one of the big things they did that I really, uh, I really, really like is they've they've basically given you these templates now that you can work from. Um, cause there were, I had a design contest internally where I said, Hey guys, I'll develop, you know, and they kind of look good. They kind of didn't. Um, they've also added this, you know, you can share views over your portals. So you actually can have a, just a static view of things. This has some really interesting applications, I think. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, if these are your product pages and they're dynamic and you can do that. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's a lot here. I play with it. Um, they still got a few little scaling issues I found. So in other words, you need to design this kind of on a the lowest resolution monitor you would want to design it on and make sure it fits on that screen. Otherwise, it can kind of get crunched up because if you pack this, pack this up on a 4K monitor, it's going to kind of kind of look there. But they've gotten a little better with that. Um, but I don't know. And you can now actually edit internally. So I think that they put the edit button in. Um, yeah, they had stuff. the edit button and then the dirt, like they added the Ajax update. So you can do like normal, like field updates without having to hit the edit button. Like you would. Yeah. Record view, yeah when this was bad. first released, you'd see this pretty view. And if you actually wanted, to, this was literally just a view only. And you had to edit out into the old look and feel to make any changes. Um, but now you can edit fields in line and drop widgets in. And I don't know it's a big deal. Uh, I am expecting that probably now over the next six, eight months, a lot of people are going to want to come to us and say, Hey, dial these in for us, you know? Yeah. And they, and they really like, I mean, this tagline in the marketing, you know, um, canvas, the industry's first CRM design studio, like this is a pretty groundbreaking feature to be able to add this type of functionality. We get these questions all the time where people are just like, Oh yeah. Like, can I just add like a button like here? And it just like, you're like, no, like that's ridiculous. Like this is, this is just how this, the software works, but like right. so you can actually design it with, with real intention to customize a, for your team, for how you work. Um, I think that especially with some of the limitations and as we're starting, the real value is go not, it, you know, modules with a lot of data is going to be is kind of the hardest ones. That's the more problematic ones here. Um, but, you know, really for those more simple modules, just being able to have a really tight UI is, is really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't trivial. I mean, they announced this. I saw the preview of this April 2019 at Zoholics in yeah. Austin, Texas. Right. <laughs> and I remember seeing this preview and they're like, yeah, it's going to be out by the end of the year. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it was a lot more difficult than they thought it was going to be to get this thing out the door, but uh, they did it. And, uh, you know, now it's come some time. They've made a lot of change the last few months to this. So good stuff. And on top of that, if you uh, want to, and you want to share your screens, they've, they've got a new badge. You can be a canvas artisan. I love that brand name like that. That is that is like I was like not as interested. And then I saw it, it's an art. I'm like, ah, I, mean, I think I might need to get this badge now. I don't know, man. Well, I don't think you can. I don't know what you have to do to get it. I um, I actually saw this because I have got a um, I've got a, a, a personal Zoho account, right? It's just right. for all the family stuff and the family books and blah, blah, blah. And, and I do that. And so it's kind of nice because then I, I get all the Zoho stuff I would normally get in my inbox for that account. Right. And, and they're like, Hey, since you've been beta, and I was a beta tester and they're like, since you've been beta tested, we want you to know you're, you're now an artisan. So if you were a beta tester, you got an email with this badge and then they put, they're really wanting to do a social media campaign on this. They're basically saying, Hey, I look at this template that they put together. Um, they want social media promotion. So um, I think though, to use this badge, we got to really show what we're doing. So I'm, I'm looking to get some cool examples internally and post them out there. I'll probably have to do another contest with the team. And see what yeah. Kind of cool and, and definitely just like slowly warming like clients up towards seeing what's possible. And, and like, this is just such a shift in, you know, the, the service offerings that we have here, because it's, it's, it's a completely different type of work than like the system and the process. It's, it's really like 
how does your team think? How do you interact with the data and, and what, like, what do you need to highlight? What do you want to visualize? Like just being able to like this unlocks so much. Um, it's almost, yeah. Like you have an almost entire website design capabilities now in, in, inside of Zoho, which is insane. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, so good on you, Zoho. I mean, it's finally released and that's good. And, um, and then this is a big one. And we we're talking about this before the show, but, um, Zoho recruit, now has a whole offer letter um, related list. Yeah, this is huge um, to be able to have the offer letters and tracking within Recruit. Um, we've definitely done custom implementations with Zoho Sign um, to take you know your default templates and blast them out, get them signed, tracked, etc. But um, especially for a recruiting software, um, and compared to other um, ATSs, applicant tracking systems in the industry, we definitely see like Recruit is on the lower side in terms of some of these features and they've definitely in the last year like cranked out some of the really vital features um that you could do custom before but now are just coming out of the box um and and kind of their division between um internal recruiting versus like staffing type recruiting you, you're really able to have a really wholesome um offering and offer letters is like a critical one of the final critical pieces to bring this together yeah, it's finally. I noticed we picked up a few recruiters this year that are that find it to be an ATS that is worthy for them, you know. And, and they actually make this for recruiters too. I mean, you can buy that, manage multiple orgs, do the entire thing, and uh, it's nice to see this as a you know applicant tracking system that's really, really working coming together. I love using it internally. I love the way it integrates with everything, and you know, it's just it's really, really slick. So I'm pretty. Uh, pretty happy to see that as well i think for most users that would be using recruit in in just for their own company as as let's just say as part of the zoho one suite as a as a company you know i i'm trying to run my entire company off of zoho one recruit it has all of like the core features that it needs to do that um which is really exciting it does and it integrates in with people and yeah, anyway, it's got nice integration. It's, it, it integrates with almost all the job boards that are out there. It does a nice job with that. Um, the setup's easy. So if you haven't checked it out, give it a try. And then moving on, um, since we're recording the show on Wednesday, it's a little bit of a slow, it's not really a slow news week, but it's going to be slow for us because we've only had three, four days of news we can catch up on here. But uh, we've got the Zoho Workplace July 2021 roundup. It came out yesterday. Um, so this is kind of taking everything in that entire workplace suite and basically saying, hey, here's what's going on. And we've covered almost all of these. Uh, I will say the ones I we talked about a week or two ago, this uh, line spacing options in Rider is just fantastic. I, I love it. Um and I, you know, they've done some really, really nice stuff. I don't know about this lively presentations with audio and video. Well, we covered <laughs> this one. How um, lively? This was a month ago. I must, uh, oh, I don't, I think this is just, I'm not even sure this is an announcement because um, you've always been able to embed. So you basically can embed audio and video and show. That's not new. Sometimes Zoho trips us up with some of these things. But anyway. I wonder if uh, they improved some of the the file management around that and how that's embedded. Um, because that they, they be definitely big. have <laughs> struggled with that in the past. And I think that it, it definitely feels more stable right now, which is exciting. Yeah. And I tell you, the workplace suite is great. I mean, I love Zoho Mail. It's it's fantastic, and with the integration across the board, it's and, and you know a lot of the plugins and widgets they've done for it are great. The new calendar was released. Um, I think our whole company oh, yeah. would we use WorkDrive. We use all of the Office applications. Um, the reason we haven't left Google Mail and Google Calendars that um, you know Google Calendar and and uh, or Zoho Calendar and Zoho Mail just don't do zoom integration and they don't do like calendly integration you know and you yeah. you kind of have to have those acuity there's too many people there's too many people that will not move from some of those core applications right and you gotta have those things in order to do it so if you're listening zoho um 
third party and real third party integrations, not stuff through Zapier, you know, would really help the, I think the workplace app would go. Yeah. And I think that the other like sell is it's, Hey, I'm already using like people don't like change. And when we're trying to migrate systems, like if they can keep Calendly and zoom, um, and we can get them into some of these core applications, then they are more open to trying out say Zoho bookings or Zoho meeting to substitute for their existing software, but to change all of your applications at one time, like that's just, that's just not how it works. So it's a right. lot easier to move clients on um, when we do this. So I am a strong proponent for Zoom integrations for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the big Zoom, go to meeting, WebEx, it's got to be there, right? Um, what's, sure. what's, what's Microsoft? Teams, right? Teams, you got to, yeah. you got to have the Teams integration. I mean, if you're going to move an enterprise, People aren't going to give up their Microsoft that easily. You know what I mean? So, especially when it comes to enterprise, Teams is by far a dominator in the field. Unfortunately, I, 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 I appreciate Teams a lot. It's certainly a great product. It's not my favorite, but I definitely understand it. Um, but like, Teams are just so tied into the Microsoft Teams like suite that is a uh, we're we're doing some custom integrations right now to try and support that a little bit better. All right. And now also we've got the Zoho Marketplace Roundup. Um, Tyler and I always talk about this. They're, a lot of these are not new, but they are updated. So this Google Drive for Zoho CRM has been around forever. It's written by Zoho. It's different than the one we talked about last week on the show, which was really cool. Um, it had some interesting features, I should say. The Google Drive one's good. But some interesting, we're starting to see telephony extensions come out into the marketplace now which I mean, I guess this means they're supporting the phone bridge because um, it's saying here, I wonder if phone bridge is now being replaced by marketplace extensions. I don't know. I, I have a feeling that they're, it could still go either way. It's like a little early to tell, but there's definitely a possibility that they'll start kind of consolidating these two effective marketplaces into, into one. Here. I, I, I would think so. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, one thing you don't lack for our uh, telephony options inside of uh, Zoho. <laughs> it's just so many of them. I think half of them are based on Twilio, but uh, there's just a whole lot of telephony options there. Um, but we were kind of going through these. I had this Shippo for Zoho CRM. Uh, it's actually by Tierra Consulting and uh, Bankatesh, shout out. Looks like a nice integration that was built for you guys for Shippo. I'm not all that familiar with Shippo, um, but was there, was there one here you thought was new as well? kind of, I don't know. Anyway, a lot of new integrations in the marketplace. Uh, and I don't know. It's hard to, you kind of got to go through them. This one's interesting, check printing for Zoho Books. You can do check printing in Zoho Books. Um, you have to have special checks, <laughs> all sorts of stuff, but it does work. Uh, but this looks like an interesting one that I might That's really exciting. I, I, with QuickBooks, they have bill pay, which is really convenient. Um, and I I don't have the attention span to <laughs> write checks in, and manage those processes when most of our payments are already electronic. So I, that the convenience of that and bringing that to books is, is excellent. Yeah. I think the Zaluri ones I haven't seen before either at the very bottom there. Okay. I don't know what Zaluri is. Zaluri. <laughs> Let's Zaluri or Zaluri. I don't know. Um, there's a show title there somewhere around Zaluri. Zaluri is a comprehensive SaaS operations management platform for IT teams. Wow. Managed, secure, and comply across multiple SaaS applications from a single dashboard. So it sounds like something maybe an MSP would use, huh? Yeah, it's this over. Is a, it's over by Zlurry. And they actually have a really beautiful website too. That's this is <laughs> automate <laughs> IT tasks, secure <laughs> software services. Is it Zlurry.com? Zlurry.com. Yeah, well, their link is bad on the off the marketplace side. Uh, that's not good. Fix your link on the marketplace. There we go. Can't manage SaaS spreadsheets. I like so this. with direct integration with projects, you can easily track which users hold Zoho project licenses, how frequently they use Zoho projects, and which features they're using. You'll get a detailed usage and engagement metrics for each user on the Zoho projects platform. That's really cool. 
Also, like you can it. manage license ownership provisions of project accounts for users. This that that is very very interesting to be. I, I know. Um, I I feel like I get a lot of clients that ask about like usage in the um, Zoho CRM, especially particularly like reports access. I know like people tend to like want to see who's accessing reports and when, or if they're downloading those reports. Um, but in Zoho projects, I mean, it's similar similar concerns for sure. So this this is really, yeah. really interesting. Their pricing though is uh, <laughs> oh build build a oh, yeah. per month build annually <laughs> build annually yeah so if you want all of the integration center and you want everything else it's going to cost you twelve thousand a year this really does look like a enterprise I mean it, it's really yep. an enter it's solving enterprise problems for sure so this it, it makes sense that it's on I guess closer to enterprise pricing there you go. All right, that's lovely. very interesting. Very cool. Yeah, see, we learn something new. Just dig around through the marketplace apps. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. All right, and I would normally say, okay, Tyler, and that brings us to our implementation of the week. But now it's like, okay, Brett, here's our implementation of the week. Um, this is kind of interesting. When we were talking about this before, um, so we love Click over here, and so this is sending automated notifications via CRM workflows to click. Well, you say, of course, that's easy. You just go into workflows and I want to send a click notification. But when you do that in a general CRM workflow, your option is, hey, you can just send it to a channel or a specific person. Well, in this case, um, we actually did this for someone who's in the audience right now. It was, we want to go into the account record. We want to look up who the owner is, whether it be in a deal or an account or contact. Then we want to go grab their ID out of click and we want to send them a specific message. So with a little Deluge script, uh, you can do it to a, and it can come from anyone. It can come from an admin profile. You can create a bot um, and, and drop it in and basically uh, pass that information along that way. So this is just kind of taking that you know, hey, I want to drop a general notification being very targeted with these uh, click notifications. Uh, and basically, you can trigger this on anything. So um, really cool implementation from the team. Yeah, deluge-based click notifications get really, really fun. And and you kind of saw this a lot. Like, you get a lot of inspiration from Slack notifications and some of the extensions that you can install there. But you're able to add things like approval buttons. Like if if you want to send a click message and say, hey, this record is ready to approve. And you can have the approve button right in that message. If you add a little card with some of those details, right? You can, we, we've done like lead distribution bots where it will send a, you know, when a new lead gets added, it'll send a notification to the first person on the list and say, hey, do you want to claim this lead? You have 15 seconds. And they can hit claim or decline. Uh, con it consumes a credit into Internally because they want to limit and make sure that there's fair distribution ac across their sales team. And it just automatically goes to the next person on the list. So you have this dynamic click-based round robin. Um, there's so many cool cards, buttons, and combinations that you can do. And the without having to leave into a third-party app, is it, just having that directly within Zoho is, is awesome. Yeah. There's so much here. I mean... Actually, interviewing a guy at one point who he was on the professional or the free version of Zoho CRM, and it's limited. I don't know if you can't do workflows or you can't run Deluge or whatever. You can't have a button. You can't write. Um, <laughs> but click isn't limited that way. <laughs> so he was he was having click query 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 the CRM return that query back, and it was for a round robin, right? It was one for lead distribution. Um, Okay, here's here's the people who are you know available, and then going back and then grabbing the lead and then writing back to the lead using the scripting from Click. So he's basically getting around that entire thing. It's a pretty cool workaround. <laughs> There's a lot you can do. I think that the first time back in the day, like Click had uh, webhook handlers before CRM was able to do that, and I remember like back in the day form stack integrations going directly into click which would then create the lead and in the crm yeah. And chain down yeah click click is all has had some pretty powerful deluge for a while that's great <laughs> but now you're saying i was talking about how much we love click and we're all in and that's all we ever use and um 
but you say you're, you're still using Slack internally. What, what do you get out of Slack that you're not seeing inside a click? I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of Slack. And one of the biggest reasons for that is like being able to switch workspaces um, because I'll have clients and client organizations that have their own workspace. And instead of having to clutter my own Slack, I can actually just jump into it's like I'm signing into their Slack organization. I remember and, that. I remember that. Yes. And so right now, like we have like for um, clients at Nimbus, like we have support channels and clicks so that clients instead they can chat with Zoho or they can chat with us instead. Right. Um, But that means that we have all these channels in our click and confusing that with our internal communication, I think, has started to it's it's started to become a lot. Um, I also there's there's a lot of really cool like there's more Slack extensions available. Um, and, and so some of those, like some of the channels and groupings, um, are really helpful. I, I think that with click, um, the, it's really that desktop app experience and then the mobile app experience. It just, it just feels really good. And I've been hesitant to like move away from, from Slack to click because of that. Um, yeah, to me, the benefits of click really outweigh any small things like that. I mean, the channels is not, I mean, having the whole separate workspaces that is that is a big one and i can see how you do that um we That's have separate channels I, I, i'm i'm pretty sure because yeah. at the, like, all of those things i could deal with but not if i also had to have all of my clients in that same yeah. space as well i just think all the crazy benefits and things you can do with car just across the board it just it just outweighs it and i think for most companies that's not a thing right for most I don't companies, think it's Slack just would all work for most co- Yeah, because we're able to do a lot of the automations um, ourselves yeah. that we want to do. That's what allows us to really engage Slack. Um, but it, a lot of the the those Slack integrations you can definitely do with Click. You can do just as easy, just as um, actively. I um, and and we see like I mean, Click has added some things like you know the you know, work from home check ins. Um, being able to like they already have integrated status syncing and all that stuff i just want to see more from click um but i i have very very high confidence in the product because we've seen just even in like how they responded during covid with the new features and uh functionality they've implemented it's been very stable it's been very um powerful so I, i i know that with what they're building um they have very clear standards. And I, I think the other big thing with Slack is we see how, like, uh, what Salesforce just acqu- officially acquired Slack, right? Um, right. And so now that is, that was already inbuilt and natively part of the Salesforce environment and now even more so tied into that. Um, and we see that with Click, but I, you know, I know that the power of having Click there means that we'll be seeing record based communication in Click better, right? Um, yep. I th- and I think the last thing for me is the the adoption for from third parties, right? So with with Slack, I can easily get another person onto it that is not part of the Zoho suite, and that I think is one of the biggest benefits for having a third party system. Um, but I know Click is working on some of these third party and guest systems, and as yeah. Zoho has like very rapidly been getting more user traction, and especially for services like that are more lightweight, like works workplace and work drive click we're going to get more people able to use it so that that's very exciting for me yeah i don't know if click has a free version or not it should have a free version because you know they just did invoice for free um yeah invoice the great gateway drug to zoho i mean i think click would be another good gateway drug as it is, were. you're right this is a great great gateway drug. <laughs> maybe with limited <laughs> uh, automation functionality <laughs> it is All right, well, let's move on to the read of the week. Uh, Five ways marketers can repurpose their webinar content to maximize ROI. I like this article. Um, Basically, Vanu, you turned me on to this. Last time you were on the show, you said, you know, you really got to start checking out the Zapier blog. And so now I'm kind of reading that more often. And um, it's great. I mean, they really do a very, very nice job with some of their stuff over here. And looking at this, you know, we're... um, this is something we do, you know, I mean, repurposing some of this stuff, uh, it gets you so much more mileage out of it. I mean, the idea is if you create this content, you want to get it out there and you want people to, to view it. Right. And so, uh, this is kind of, you know, how can you do it? 
Um, you know, so link related uh, resources for a webinar page, you know, include, you know, tips in a blog post, uh, anyway, on and on and on and on and on. Um, but it's, it's a good read and worth the time. Um, I find that, uh, you know, we actually have been now taking the entire webinar and creating an entire blog post around everything that was covered in the webinar. Um, Good. I think that, um, yeah, the, being able to have, we've been, uh, it's, it's complicated to be able to have like a really easy, it takes a lot of work to take a video and get really good notes, break it down. And, and, but it is worth that time, especially I think when it comes to webinars and a, a lot of this comes down to, you know, kind of the, the same prints, I mean, uh, uh, same principles of really modular, scalable design, um, which applies to everything. And, and even in webinar design, if you're able to string your blocks together in easy ways, you can repurpose, repurpose that content for your website, you can, you know, you already have the visuals in the same way you can do it and vice versa as well, taking different parts and using that to inform your webinars was, is very powerful. Yeah. And one thing they don't mention here, and I was kind of wondering how this was going to go, but you know, we'll do a webinar and it's an hour long and maybe we're covering eight different topics over that webinar in, in depth. And, you know, we've got timestamps on the YouTube videos so people can jump around, but they necessarily don't. And we did an entire, you know, we, we ran a poll across our entire audience, which was, Hey, what do you think? Do you, do you like short videos or do you like, long videos. And it was virtually 50-50 on the short and the long, right? At the end of the day. So now we do the webinar and we release it. And then we take it and we break it into maybe five other videos that just cover a topic and retitle them that way. And I'm just amazed. I mean, there are a lot of people, they're just looking for that specific topic, right? And they never would have found it in our webinar because it's just an overview and they might not have wanted to go through it, but you kind of go down on that one topic. Anyway, uh, you know, you want people to see your content. You want to get some traction with it. That's the reason you do these kind of things. So worth taking a look at. All righty. And with that, let's move on to what's new over at Zanata.com. Um, we've got a blog on our 10 favorite WordPress plugins. Uh, go through this. This is something that basically our web team, they use it, all these on a pretty much daily or weekly basis. Um, these are some really, really big, uh, you know, big plugins. They're important, important plugins. Uh, you know, sales IQ is in here as well, but, you know, GT metrics, uh, content views, there's just so much, uh, so much here. Uh, I think the big one that we love so much is WP rocket, uh, takes a lot to customize it, a lot to set it up. We actually do this for a lot of people. Um, but if you want to speed up your website and get a great GT metric score, that's a good one to look at. Yeah, I've I've heard great things on Yoast SEO as well um, that you have on the list here. Um, yeah, that we haven't. Uh, we, we're working on implementing as well. Um, we went with uh, we went with Divi over Elementor, and I, I, Elementor is is also excellent. Um, Divi is a little bit yep. more lightweight and has less features, um, or le less features, less less flexibility. Um, I'm very very curious to see how services like this we'll start being able to integrate with Zoho services where we're able to drag and drop integrated components from our Zoho systems into our website. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think that's going to eventually happen with Zoho sites. Um, you know, Zoho sites is so young and so new and kind of raw right now. Right. But that could become the thing where you're able just to pull all these things over and just do it natively. Absolutely. And uh, with that, we've actually launched an entire new web services division. There was no that, that article. See how that tied in like that? See how we did that? Huh? <laughs> so, yeah. So we've got our WordPress development, our Shopify development, Google ads and SEO consulting, uh, support plans, you name it, it's there. So, you know, head over to Zanata.com slash web hyphen services and you can check out that. And then we uh, kind of want to wrap it up with our case study. I want to shout out to Otis Sampson. Um, some really nice stuff from them. This was pretty straightforward. Clean slate. It, you know, they basically, you know, recruiting, uh, doing some nice stuff. And we just kind of set them up from scratch. And there was a whole, whole new website, whole new CRM, applicant tracking system, all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, they loved it. We had them kind of set up and out of the box and 
just a super quick amount of time. That's the thing, man. If you're starting from scratch and someone's just brand new and they're ready to go, um, you can really, you know, if you're not, you're, if you're not trying to repair any damage that's been done in the past, man, you can get someone going pretty quick. So uh, shout out to Otis Sampson and thank you so much for that. All right. And that brings us to our application of the week. I don't know if you've ever played with any of these or not. So this is a Chrome extension that basically does nothing more than allow you to just bring up a nice little text box to write something on. <laughs> and so I love this stuff. It's a huge. I mean, just being able to like, ha I mean, either you're doing that in your like note, you know, no, you know, notes on Mac, right? Like that's usually the temporary place, but um, especially with some of the, I mean, with the amount of coding that we do, having little code snippets in, in your browser is, is really nice uh, to be able to paste in and that persists. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it's things like, you know, I'm maybe I'm running payroll and I'm getting hours and I, you know, I could write it on a piece of paper. Or I don't want to have a notepad, right? So I just sit here and I just like, you know, copy and paste, copy and paste. So I got everybody's hours and everything and it's just all right here. And then I can just separate it out and go into payroll and just bop, you know. Yeah, you could write it down. It's it's a simple, simple, simple little application, and it's the minimal text editor. And it is by Tay Kim. And he's got a thousand plus users and five stars. And there's just not much more you can say about this thing. It's got dark mode. <laughs> it's minimal. <laughs> but, it is minimal. It has dark mode. <laughs> yes, it has dark mode. And I guess you can download your uh you know, your notes as well, which is kind of interesting, the whole download the text thing. So it's going to download as a text file. So it's got that going for it. But that's kind yeah, of there's just there's just a big benefit to being able to maintain your notes without without having to switch a browser, right? Collapse. Yeah, it, it's put just, it, in, it, it's, it, it, collapse it, visit it later, done, you know? Yep. Yeah. And Zoho Notepad or Notebook, I do like that. And I guess I don't think about it. I could just boom, bring up notebook, you know, write there it all there. There is a there. extension for that too, right? That there like, is uh, um, post-it notes pop up kind of thing. I there think it, it takes up a lot more screen real estate, though. I think that's the one. It of does. The is there? It does. But you could go back and forth with it. I don't know. Notebook is. Uh, I don't know. Don't get me started. <laughs> I love that application. It's virtually. I mean, I don't know. This is the first week there. They haven't released a Zoho notebook integration for Zoho with something still not CRM. And I'm just kind of waiting for that. You know, I don't know if I told you, I talked to the guy and he goes, it is not trivial. I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand what's not trivial. Anyway. Um, all righty. And then that takes us to our tip of the week. And Tyler is handling this month's tips. So uh, we're up. He's got a four part series on Zoho analytics and they're big. Um, you know, we talked about this. This is 13 minutes on setting up your workspace. I think one of these is like a 20 minute tutorial. Our entire CRM, our entire webinar on analytics was like 35, 40 minutes. And anyway, Tyler's going into a super deep dive on uh, Zoho Analytics. So well worth taking a look at that. And that's over at uh, youtube.com slash Sonata. But um, I tell you what, analytics, it's like a black art to me. I don't know. It's it's it can get really complex. Like you can do certain things really really easily, and certain things just are that that feel like they should be easy just just aren't. And it it definitely is still a growing product. Um, it, it it's definitely improved. I'm excited to see more data visualizations, just more low or no code solutions. Um, as the product keeps growing, but it's definitely usable. And I, I think that the big, I, I think the three hour data sync, that is, is the major, like, that's the big one. It's, the, it's that. Yeah. yeah. What, what, if, mean, well, if they just do just that one, I think that if they even get that down to an hour, just something that makes more sense, it's at, at the top of the hour, every hour you're, you're yeah. wrong. Well, they're, you know, the visualization is dramatically improved, you know, analytics 5.0 just came out. Um, and so the speed as well. Yeah, improvements are there. Everything's there. But yeah, it's got to be real time um, or, you know, or an hour or something. Or or if you hit sync, it needs to sync immediately, right? I mean, it just needs yeah. to, to grab it. Yeah. The concern, like the, you start building out, like you have your data in the CRM. You start building out a CRM report and 
you then you hit a barrier and you're like, oh, well, I guess the only thing that I can do now is go to analytics. But now I lose the real time ability that I had in right. CRM. That is extraordinarily unfortunate. And even if it is for maybe other products, third party integrated products, that that CRM one specifically is is very unfortunate. But the yeah. report upgrades to CRM make kind of help that a little bit. So yeah, rather than analytics creating a workspace and pulling the data in, which is what it's doing, right? It would be nice since you're in an integrated system to have it actually connect to the database, right? Then you'd be real time. So for Zoho applications, make that direct connection. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, in in most BI, we should be able to just <laughs> refresh button. That does the BI applications do that pretty pretty well. So. It is uh, interesting. I, I'm, I'm hoping that Zoho will, you know, push towards that that goal um, at least for CRM, if not for any other product. For for CRM, they definitely have the the capacity to to work towards that. But it is a technical challenge for sure. All right. Well, Vinut, man, so great to have you on the show, buddy. I hope you can uh, join us again soon. And uh, for those of you who are looking to get in touch with us, you know please go over to Zanata.com and drop us a line. Also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and for goodness sake, subscribe to our newsletter and go over to youtube.com slash Zanata and subscribe to us there and you'll never miss a thing. You'll get all this content in real time. Again, Manu, I hope to have you back very, very soon. Thanks so much for joining us, buddy. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you for, and hopefully see you soon. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks.